Games of Christmas Past, a series in which I will be going through uh, various Christmases and just some of the wonderful games I received those years, uh, memories of them. And, you know, much like any of my streams, I may play the whole game, I may not, but we're going to take a look today at Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And uh, what this wonderful hunk of plastic did is it introduced me to gaming for the very first time as a kid. This was the first console game I ever played on my Aunt Sarah's old Sega Genesis. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in now. I still have that Sega Genesis, but we're going to go ahead and run it on the Retron 5, the Hyperkin. I'm sure some of you are familiar with that. I'm going to plug this in right now, and I'm going to load up Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And again, probably not going to play through the whole game, although I easily could. I've played it quite extensively at uh, various points in my life. But um, go ahead right now and let Sega take it away, quite literally. Ah, the old Sega tone. Heck, even just hearing this music, like, I mean, this music was iconic. So, yeah, this is Emerald Hill Zone. This, again, first, you know, experience with Sonic, first level I ever saw was not Green Hill Zone, it was Emerald Hill Zone. This was uh, in the summer of 1993. So some of you may notice, you know, I put Ghost, uh, Games Christmas Past 1993, and you're going to be like, well, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 came out in 1992. That is right. November 24th, 1992. And looking back at it, like, this might have been Sega's most successful game ever. Like, this game sold so many copies, partially because it was packed in with Genesis. Another tradition that I wish they did more often in today's console gaming, but um, this game was packed in with the Genesis, so I mean, they sold millions of copies just from doing that. And, I mean, obviously the impact it's had on my life is immeasurable. As I've mentioned many times, this is my first video game ever, so I'm always going to feel a special attachment to this game above all others. So that makes it... I mean, easily the most meaningful on this list, but I'm going to go through, you know, and not every year had a game like this, you know, 1993 Christmas, I received the second Genesis with Sonic 2, you know, there'll be some other years, 96 had some really good games, 98, 99, of course, and so on, so I'm not going to play every single year of games, I might even do a couple games that weren't so great, that I thought would be good, <laughs> we're looking at you, 2005, you know, 2006, you guys know what I'm talking about, some of you. Uh, I might not play through a lot of this game, just wanted to kind of make this, you know, my thing. And as with any of my streams, I want to get the audience involved, so, you know, welcome. If you haven't already watched one of my streams, this is Chaos Blur. I am the, well, the chairman and the only person who runs Bobby Productions. So, if my gameplay doesn't seem so amazing, it's just because I want to pay attention to all you lovely fans while I do this. Of course, Sonic is not necessarily a game where you can take your eyes off the road for too long, as you know. Wow, I'm really bad right now. Genesis controller is a little sticky. I'll play that now. I'll probably just play the first four levels, because those were, like, my favorite levels, and not that the other levels weren't great, and this game had amazing music, by the way. Here comes the fat doctor himself. This was my first encounter with Dr. Robotnik, of course. I used to be, like, afraid of this boss. I, mean, I was, like, what, five, six years old? This is music starts, this guy with a drill's coming after me. I'm like, oh, God, help me! He's running from side to side of the screen. It's actually, like, the easiest boss ever. But, yeah, that's the uh, first level. And, I mean, I would love... Like, with this series, I don't want to just be talking about the games and how much I love them and how great they were. Like, I want to hear other people's opinion. Maybe if you didn't like the game, or even if you did, like, some of your memories with Sonic 2 or whatever game I'm playing at the time. Actually, I think the next episode's going to be 1996, when I got uh, Sonic 3D Blast, which was another... wasn't... I mean, well, you'll see. <laughs> we'll talk about Sonic 3D Blast another time. Right now, it is Sonic the Hedgehog 2's Time to Shine. There was something hiding in here. The cool thing about Sonic games, if you slow down and smell the roses, you often find some of these little extras. Like this. Of course, there's the other stuff like the Chaos Emeralds, which I'm not going to go for right now, but if you got all seven Chaos Emeralds coupled with 50 rings, you can become Super Sonic. Pretty much just broke the game, even Super Invincible. Of 
notice this part right here. Sonic actually moves so fast, he, like, pretty much breaks the camera. This was, like, the epitome of... Whoa, okay. It's the epitome of me hitting the wrong button. It was the epitome of uh, Sega Blast Processing, which is how they marketed this game, which is awesome, just by the way. Sega knew how to sell a product, I'll give them that. If I think of other things to say, I'll say them, but I'm not really here to tell you guys about Sonic 2. You guys know it. If you're watching the stream, chances are you have your own opinions on it, but... Alright, so we got zero viewers, so no lines if you have any questions. I'm always open to questions. Sega is my favorite video game character of all time, and this is obviously what got that started. It's just that. Interesting character and everything. So yeah, hope you're enjoying the show. Like I said, Games of Christmas Past, I think it's a cool idea. Focusing on all those games which made past Christmases so special. Doesn't get much more special, actually, than 93. I know Christmas 99 is a personal favorite of mine, but Christmas 93 was really the first time in my life I got this big gift where, you know, I was old enough to know what it was, you know? Damn, like, I just, like, lost all my speed there. Lovely. Now, because, I mean, as a kid, you know, you get toys, you think they're cool, whatever, but, like, you don't really, like, you know, you might play with them for a few days, or, you know, you might go out sledding once or twice in the winter, or, you know, whatever. Or some relatives get you clothes or something, and you're like, oh, socks, yay. Yeah, you'll wear those socks, but... This, to me, was, like, really... Like, this... Oh, shit. I swear, I'm generally better at this game. I'm trying to do, like, a little history lesson right now. Screw it, I got time. Nobody watching this. And the other thing you'll notice by you, I mean nobody, because nobody's watching it, is that, like, I tend to make fun of myself a lot. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not like, yo, 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 it's Bobby G here, we're gonna, we're gonna blaze through this game, it's gonna be, like, the coolest thing ever. And I'll tell you, I'll be like, hey, I suck at this, like, I've done a few test runs of this, so I either get stuck in the wall, something stupid happens. It's all part of the fun. Oh jeez, I was almost dead. I always used to die in this boss just because of the breakaway bricks that are on most of the level. This game has like an odd difficulty curve. Like the first couple levels, like this level's actually I think pretty hard for an early level. Because then the next two levels are pretty easy, and then all of a sudden the game gets like really hard after Royal Ocean Zone. But I digress. Check the tote board. Uh, we got zero viewers right now. Yes, Tails, I know. So excited. I, I wish I could make Tails stop jumping. I can't. And he, he always annoyed me, even back in the day. He's just like, he's just annoying. He's just there. He just copies your actions half the time. Which is why, as I got older, I figured out creative ways to kill him. Be like, yeah, I'll just jump into the water, but I'll dodge at the last second. He'll fall and then drown. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was not a nice kid. Especially to two tailed foxes, but hey, yeah, how often is that really going to come up, right? Am I right? My homies? This is why I don't have any ears. Well, to be fair, I am the, uh, as I was mentioning, I'm the Twitch affiliate of Bobby Productions, so nobody watches that channel either. I mean, if I really wanted to, I could beat this game in like 25, 30 minutes, all the whole game. It's only 10 stages, two acts each. 
Well, Metropolis has that nasty third act, but I digress. Oh, that was almost close. Sometimes your speed gets the best of you. I learned that early on, too. Like, people always say Sonic games are, like, super fast, and they are at times, but, like, I don't know. As I got older, I'm like, people are like, oh, Sonic's just about running fast. I'm like, it is? Like, I used to play these games all the time. I would be cautious as hell, even on some of these levels. See, that's why. So the people who say, like, oh, the games are broken because they put obstacles in your way, it's like, no, they put obstacles in your way, so you actually have to plan and, you know, prepare how to play it, not just you run as fast as you can. And then it's the game's fault you hit an obstacle. No, it's your fault you hit an obstacle. That's how the levels are designed. Like, Sonic have some Sonic games have some of the most beautifully designed levels I've ever seen. You know, it's more than just the character. Like, the games are actually like, as far as I'm concerned, like works of art in that regard. You don't make me look bad, game. I'm giving you a compliment. Getting flung all over the place right now. Like, yeah, you can do these really cool moves, but if you're not careful, like right now, I'm kind of stuck down here because I didn't take the right path. Then, of course, if you don't get air soon enough, it starts the countdown of doom. I'm sure many of you remember that daunting Jaws music that just starts playing as you run out of air. Careful here, because as you flip out of here, there's going to be some enemies right there. They will definitely give you the business. Clearly a little rusty here. As I mentioned, I am taking questions from the audience. Of course, there really is no audience, so... Yeah. This uh, next level will likely be the last level I play of the uh, first episode. So, hope you enjoy, but, you know, for now, I'm not even going to bother. Yeah. Just how it is. I play these things for fun, and I kind of hope that someone will show up and join the ride. But if not, it's all good. It's all good in the hood. You waste a lot of time in this level just like going for the slot machine, trying to get, you know, bad money. That is not bad money, but it's making me mad. Zero viewers, can't even get myself a bot. Is anybody watching me? Can't even get a bot. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I don't really have a goal. Sometimes I would have a goal like to get to two or three hundred rings first. Not so much right now. Oops, okay. I guess I'm down here now. Bum -ba -dum -bum -bum. See, like this part is not fast at all. Just watching a platform go up and down. Oh, almost watched it go down to my head. Like I said, this is the fourth level of the game, and to me it's like really easy. Like, this is almost the halfway mark, and you're looking at, you know, a pretty easy, slow-paced level. But it's just a fun level. Like, I used to love this level, and I still do. The colors, the lights, the bumpers, everything just kind of working together. I was about to say, the only way you die, you can die is getting crushed by those blue things, which happens more often than I like to admit. This part's kind of cool, because you can just stand here and watch Sonic do that the whole time keeping his like hanging onto a ledge animation. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Yeah, like I said, the music's just very catchy. Every level really reflects perfectly what the theme is. Tails is just kind of sliding there behind me, like, yo, what up, Sonic? It's not even like he's giving up on his legs animation. It's not leg day for him.
right, so that completes Act 1. Like I said, this will probably be my last act for the night unless I get more uh, users' interaction. Because I've kind of said all there is to say about as far as my history with Sonic 2 is. It was the summer of 1993. I went over to my Aunt Sarah's house. She had the game. Played it. Loved it. And then in the, you know, obviously December of 93, that's when I got my own Sega Genesis. And it was magical. <laughs> that entire Christmas and that entire several months. I actually didn't beat this game until, I want to say, God, it might have even been after Dreamcast. Like, it was a long time after that I finally beat the game. I had made it to, like, the end of the game a couple times, but I could never get past the Death Egg Zone. As many of you know, you have to kill without getting hit once. No rings, one hit kill. So, I think I had cheated a couple times to beat the game, like, with, you know, invincibility cheats and stuff, but... As far as actually legitimately beating it, it might have been like 2002, 2003 that I finally beat this game. So 10 years after it released. And that's, you know, it's not because I didn't want to beat it. It, it, it. it is a hard game, especially in some of the later levels. I, I find this game is a little less forgiving than Sonic 3, even. Well, Sonic and Knuckles was the hardest, and Sonic 3 and Knuckles is, yeah, pretty tough. But actually, even this game might have been more unforgiving than those. Lots of crusher deaths, lots of things you have to kind of just watch just right. Sonic and Knuckles can be tough, but once you memorize the lay level layouts, it gets you know, a decent amount easier. It's still some annoying stuff, though. I would have, to, I would love to stream that game sometime in its entirety, because that is my favorite game of all time. Sonic 3 and Knuckles, everybody knows that. But that was not a Christmas game, believe it or not. Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I think, um, didn't get that game until way later in life, as far as like 96 or so before I actually even had the game and as far as playing it as a complete unit because separately I don't think those games beat Sonic 2 but together Sonic 3 and Knuckles to me is the best Sonic game ever made I mean from Angel Island to Death Egg Zone it's just it's beautiful it's a great game great graphics I love the bonus stages again I'm getting off topic here on this boss. I always like this boss. Got lucky that he missed me there. I'm perfectly honest with you. Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I did not like that. When I'm not rolled up in a ball, bad things can happen. Got him. That was a risky shot, but it paid off. Alright, well, doesn't look like anybody else is going to join this little party for one, so I appreciate, uh, I guess your time, whoever you are, which is nobody. And, uh, this was just the beginning, because this was episode one of Games of Christmas Past, featuring Sonic the Hedgehog 2. And, uh, you know, as we go, we're going to do other games, but for tonight, you know, that is going to do it, so I hope that... Everybody enjoyed that as we count down to Christmas 2019, see what will be the next part of history. This is about as historic as it gets. So uh, once again, I'd like to thank everybody for watching from Bali Productions and Chaos Blur. We'll see you next time.